the cha it's always a challenge as an oncologist to determine who can tolerate treatment. Uh, some of that is in the eyes of the beholder, and some of that is what the patient wants. Patients with gastric cancer often are quite beat up. Uh, certainly, if they presented with advanced disease in the first place, maybe were malnourished, then get chemotherapy for four or six months, they may not be in very good shape for subsequent treatment. Although in our hands, probably eight out of 10 patients are candidates for subsequent treatment. It's a matter of the performance status and realistically whether you think you can get treatment into them without doing more harm than good. In my experience, it's certainly patients who've been resected, have had their primaries resected, those are patients likely to go on to receive subsequent line therapy. Patients who present with advanced disease may not be in a condition to do so. That's the ma that's a physician, that's the oncologist's judgment that makes a decision there. In terms of second line therapy, majority of our patients that are fit and have good functional status go on to receive second line therapy. Historically, paclitaxel or irinotecan based therapies have been the backbone for second line therapy. And now we have plenty of data to highlight the importance of VEGF R2 inhibition in metastatic gastric cancer. Ramosurumab is FDA approved for use in second line therapy either monotherapy or in combination with paclitaxel. The majority of our patients that are fit have symptomatic disease and therefore a combination therapy is appropriate for these patients. Uh, and therefore, for majority of our patients with HER2 negative disease, we treat them with paclitaxel and ramosurumab, which is the standard of care in second line setting. Question remains of what to do with the HER2 positive patients uh, in second line setting. Well, important data uh, highlights that loss of HER2 can occur beyond trastuzumab progression. And therefore, for these particular patients, if one is to consider HER2-directed agents in second-line setting, the uh, importance of reassessment of HER2 uh, uh, needs to be considered on second biopsy because up to 20% of these tumors lose HER2 expression at the time of trastuzumab resistance. With that being said, there has not been a single trial to validate use of other HER2-directed agents beyond trastuzumab in second-line setting. Unfortunately, TDM1 trial failed, lapatinib failed in second line, uh, again, due to uh, likely patient selection and the heterogeneity of this tumor and dependent on other um, signaling pathways beyond HER2 in second line. Um, therefore, with the advent of immunotherapy and anti-PD-1 agents, really the second and third line therapy uh, options have expanded and have become uh, more exciting in the last year. There are many challenges to treating patients with advanced gastric cancer, especially beyond the first line. Uh, one, of course, is whether they can tolerate the treatment, They're in, especially their malnourished status, which is commonly a problem. There are treatments that are approved in subsequent line, ramisuriumab and paclitaxel, for example. They have modest efficacy. They're probably of some value, but you have to do it cautiously because, again, patients may not tolerate subsequent line treatment, especially if they've had a platinum up front. You, they may be prone to neuropathy, for example, with the paclitaxel. Uh, so, so I do think that uh, you know the treatment option, first of all, can you treat them? Uh, are there any targeted therapies worth using? Well, hard to say. Uh, there have been studies looking, of course, as I said, at Herceptin, although uh, trastuzumab, that would more be a first-line treatment. Uh, subsequent line treatment, uh, I've, there are studies that have really failed to show a lot of benefit to, to subsequent treatments. Interestingly, there's a, a few studies in gastric cancer with the checkpoint inhibitors have been plus or minus. Most recently, a study just came out the other day that was negative, that didn't show effect, a positive effect of the checkpoint inhibitors. So, so I, I think, uh, again, it's not so much the choice of treatment as it is how much durability you get and how willing patients are to be treated. My experience is that once you're uh, into this disease by, for a year or so, for many patients, it's just not, they can't withstand treatment. So immunotherapy, which has now been uh, proven in gastric cancer as having a role, is uh, fills an unmet need for this disease in many ways. First of all, uh, we recognize that there is going to be a subgroup of patients with gastric and gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinoma who are who can become immuno, their tumors can be immunosensitive, and and the first demonstration of that obviously is with the checkpoint inhibitors. But it goes beyond that. There's other ways in which we can try to. Uh, 
use the immune system to attack these to attack these malignancies. And when one looks at gastric and GEJ as opposed to some of the other GI cancers, this is a more immunosensitive cancer. So we're hopeful that this does fit an unmet need. Uh, we need more therapies in this disease, generally speaking. And uh, right now, a lot of the drug development emphasis is in immunotherapy. So whether it's by itself or with combinations, that part we don't know yet, but we expect the next few years to, uh, to figure that out.